Just down the street at Radio City Music Hall, not too far away from where I am, Presidents Barack Obama, Bill Clinton joined President Joe Biden for a record-breaking campaign fundraiser. The event pulled in a staggering $25 million, uh, the biggest haul ever for a political event, according to the Biden campaign. It expands the president's already uh, staggering $155 million campaign war chest, and that is more than twice as much cash on hand as Trump and the RNC currently have. NBC's White House correspondent Mike Memoli was at the fundraiser. He joins me now. Mike, it's great to see you uh, in person. It's been a minute. It's great a to while. have you here in New York. <laughs> um, so what stood out to you the most? This was quite a historic event in so many different areas. It was kind of groundbreaking in its format for a political event. You're, you were there. What did you take away from it? I mean, only 45 men have served as president of the United States, right? Right. And we got to see three of them in a conversation tonight. Now, Stephen Colbert was there, too. He tried to make it light. <laughs> he started off by saying, this is a historic moment. We have three presidents coming to New York, and not one of them is going to court. <laughs> you know? So that sort of gave you a sort of sense yeah. of the lighter moments. But listen, I mean, this, this event was all about trying to help Joe Biden fix some real vulnerabilities he has in this election. The biggest one and probably the standout moment tonight, obviously, was Gaza. You just look out look across the street, see how many protesters there were outside, and there were some inside, and they tried to disrupt the event at multiple points. And it was Barack Obama. I mean, the, the Obama-Biden relationship is so interesting. I spent a long time covering it. Biden defended President Obama a lot, and that was what endeared him to President Obama and a lot of his supporters. It helped him become president. Tonight, it was Obama coming to Biden's defense. As they were continuing to disrupt this event, Obama at one point scolded the protesters. And he said, you know, it's not enough to, if you want to talk, you also have to listen. He said that it's one thing to have moral clarity uh, and to think you have the solutions, but it's another thing to recognize that these are not easy problems to solve. He said what only a president can say. This is a diff this is not a uh, an easy job. It's a, it's a lonely seat, as he described it. And he went on to sort of lay out the challenges in this uh, situation in Gaza, things President Biden has tried to do, the complexity of, of what's still ahead. And he said, you know, that's the kind of president I want, is somebody who's bringing his empathy, his wisdom to this situation. And, and the crowd ate it up. They, they really did erupt at, at that defense. Do you get a sense that there was a, at all this contrast, you know, there's this generational contrast between what a President Obama represented and certainly what a President Joe Biden uh, has talked about. But was there any sense from the Biden campaign that having these two uh, stars, mega stars of the Democratic Party flank, flanking the current president um, could in any way backfire in, in just kind of reminding people the stark contrast. I, I think the Biden campaign recognizes that they need all the help they can get. Right. <laughs> and there's no one better to help them than these two former presidents. It's interesting because you talk about the ways in which they can help the president with some real vulnerabilities. What, what is one of the biggest vulnerability Biden has is his age. He's 81 years old. And these are two former presidents who are younger than than mm. him, former presidents yeah. who are younger than him. And by the way, former presidents who beat much older men when they first ran for president in 96 uh, and 2008. And so it was interesting to see them all on stage together, but they also made light of, of age and, right. and President Biden himself talking about uh, Donald Trump's ideas are old and they're out of shape. <laughs> So uh, a little bit of uh, red meat for the audience tonight. Yeah. And speaking of the fourth president, he was also in New York uh, doing something else, but uh, not going to court, at least today. We'll not see. today. Uh, Mike Memley, it's great to see you as always, my friend. Thank you so much. Uh, for more, I want to bring in Donna Edwards, former Democratic Congresswoman of Maryland, and David Jolly, former Republican Congressman of Florida. Um, Donna, I'll start with you. And as we mentioned there, this kind of last point that I was bringing up with Mike Biden standing on stage with two younger former presidents still ranked in uh, an enormous amount of money. Uh, is this a sign, perhaps, that age is not as big of a weakness as Democrats feared? Well, I think what happened is we had a State of the Union message earlier this month, and I think that that really helped to put aside uh, the age question in a lot of respects. And I think that what you saw, what was at least Mike reported on, on stage this evening, are different elements of the Democratic Party coming together, um, supporting, obviously, the two presidents, supporting uh, President Biden, and offering a way to talk about, communicate with the various parts of the Democratic Party. Each of those parts, Democrats are going to need in order to win an election in November. David, Biden has been taking uh, more pointed shots at Donald Trump uh, lately, particularly how cash poor his campaign is compared to uh, Joe Biden's. Um, talk to us about the importance of money at this point of the race. And will these shots that Joe Biden is taking 
with the numbers that we're seeing today, $25 million, um, have an impact on Donald Trump? Yeah, look, I think they will. And I think it's a, a broader indication of a campaign that's starting to fire on all cylinders, both in, the, in raising money and organization and targeting voters, but also in fine tuning a message. Look, they don't have to play offense against Donald Trump. Donald Trump kind of projects a, uh, his own image of criminality and culpability in front of the American people all by himself. So Joe Biden could just be focused on his domestic successes, his leadership on the world stage, but they're also including these dings on Donald Trump. And it is because despite whatever somebody might have fave or unfavorable position on either candidate, when they look at the contrast, it is very good for Joe Biden. And the Biden camp knows that. So where does the money really make a difference, Amen? It makes a difference in those seven states that will likely decide the Electoral College count. And I would even say you have to bake into Donald Trump's cash on hand the fact that it might not even be spent fully on campaigns. It might be spent on legal expenses. <laughs> I mean, the, the gap might be a lot larger than it actually looks right. like on paper now. Joe Biden's campaign is in a great spot to be six months out. Donna, where should that money go in those seven states to go specifically? How, how should this campaign, uh, the Biden campaign, put this money to use in those seven states? Where do you think would be most uh, effective? Well, I mean, you already see it happening. The Biden campaign has been running, um, consistently running ads in a lot of the states that are viewed as swing states uh, to try to move the needle. And you can actually see that that's starting to have some impact in these national polls where the gap is slowly, slowly uh, closing. Um, the Biden campaign is also, they announced they're opening up 300 or so offices all around uh, the country. And so I think that that's really important to have a presence um, in the states and to be working from now in this long campaign stretch from now until uh, November. And to put that on the ground um, and get those surrogates out uh, speaking on behalf of the president. I mean, I think today, Eamon, what you saw is the contrast that is going to go on for the duration of this campaign. There you've got the three presidents on stage uh, talking, raising money, uh, running their campaign. Biden is going all around the, the country. And then you have the contrast of Donald Trump either on a golf course, in a courtroom, um, or someplace on, on True Social. That is not a, a, a way to run a winning campaign. And I think that the Biden campaign is counting on being able to use all of that extra cash to continue to get its message out.